is now 7 p.m., so welcome to the Monday and October 15th meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please join us for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised, regular Board of Selectmen's meetings are broadcast live on Comcast Channel 15, the government channel, and all comments are reported for airing at future dates. Uh, first up, we have an announcement that Bill will be reading. We have a, um, an announcement here to the Selectmen's office in regards to the Kimball Constable Robert Delissi is resigning from his elected position effectively October 12, 2018 to pursue a new career. This creates a vacancy in the role of constable from October 13th through the town election in May 18, 2019. We'd love the town administrator know if the board desires advertising the vacancy of the town website, excuse me, and social media platforms to develop a pool of candidates to be considered by the board for an interim appointment. And the only thing that I would like to say um, about that is that um, I know that I would not be running for a constable come uh, May election, but if the board uh, wants to, I have no problem taking the position from now until May. Um, so, I, I mean, I have uh, 53 years of law enforcement experience. I am a sworn deputy at Plymouth County uh, Sheriff's Department. And, uh, I would definitely fill in if, if needed. If, um, if there's, unless there's somebody else that you want to put in there, unless the chief has somebody, I wouldn't mind doing it uh, for that short period of time. So. Mm -hmm. I would certainly be a great candidate. Okay. Uh, so, Bill, you'd be excellent at it. You have the experience, no question about it. Um, I, I would like to wait to see the, the pool of candidates that apply. And secondly, uh, I'm not sure that it's possible for the it may be, but I'm not sure that it's possible for the selectman to appoint a sitting selectman to a position that gets paid. And, you know, every time you serve a warrant, you get $25. Even even a paid position, so. Well, yeah, you, you, get, you get paid like $25 a warrant. And yeah. it's, a, you know, not... Yeah. So that, that's something to think about. So let's I'm talk about it next week. Could we I'm put it on the agenda for next week? I'm just saying that, I'm, that I would be available and be more than welcome to, to sit on the position for a short period of time. No, you, you'd be excellent at it. So can we talk about it next week? All right, we'll put that down on the agenda for next week. Uh, before we move on to our scheduled appointment with the moderator and advisory committee, we would like to have the treasurer collector come up for a brief update. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. So I just had a quick request for a vote from Selectman. With our upcoming borrowing that we're going to have, we have a couple items on there where I need to ask you for a useful life extension for the borrowing. Typically, we're allowed five years for any given term on the articles that are listed in front of you. There's six of them, and I'm going to go over them real quick. I'd like for an extension on a fire equipment to turn out here on Markham. Currently, the NFPA has over, over 10 year um, term on that. We're requesting from the five to ten on that. We have a fire equipment extraction equipment. That currently, our equipment right now, is over 20 years old. And that's going to be useful like 10 years for that. We have two fire pumping trucks coming up. Um, currently, both of them are over 20 years old. I would ask for one of them to have an eight-year term and one to have a 15-year term. We have um, fire hoses and appliances article coming up. Currently, ours are over 25 years old. I was asking for a 10-year term on those. And last but not least, I have a DPW truck and plow that's on the next town meeting. Currently, the one that we have is 18 years old and over 212,000 miles. So I'd like to ask for a 10-year term on that. Put it in front of the clerk, Mr. Bolton, to read. Um, it's just basically giving the town the vote to borrow those in extension of over five years. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the cats and the clerk of the board uh, I'll select them. Um, 
treasurer wants to alert the board to the fact that uh, she will require the board signature on borrowing paperwork on November 7th. And the paperwork will be available tonight as well as um, anyone that's unavailable during the day on the events of this week. Request, uh, what is it? Has to be ready yet. I will the vote of the clerk of the, of the uh, Board of Selectmen for the Town of Pembroke, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held October 15, 2018, in which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present, the following vote was unanimously passed, all of which appears upon the official record of the board that's in my custody. And it lists um, all of the equipment that uh, uh, Ms. McCarthy uh, talked about. I further certify that the votes um, were taken at an open public meeting, that uh, no vote was taken by secret ballot, that the notice stating the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting, that the agenda included the adoption of the above votes. It was filed by the town clerk, and a copy there were posted in a manner conspicuously visible uh, to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building of the office of the town clerk <coughs> is located or is applicable in accordance with the alternative methods of uh, notice prescribed by the and approved or approved by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMI 29.03 to be at least 48 hours not including Saturdays, Sundays and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remanded so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberation or direction in connection with the subject matter of the vote were taken in executive session, all in accordance with the master and chapter 30A, 18 through 25 as amended. Second. All right, it's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any none, I'm passing again. Before you go, Kathleen, though, just for the public's benefit could could you just tell the public why this is important sure. so um, each of our fire trucks are around 625,000 our fire equipment uh, both of them one was around 140 one was around 70,000 the fire hoses were about 75,000 and the DPW trucks around 75,000 extend the useful life of the borrowing <coughs> allows the town's people to pay less basically it's extending your car payment longer than five years although we wouldn't be able to do that because the car technically is within a five-year usage, but it makes it more affordable for the town's people. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And thank you to the advisory committee and moderator for uh, waiting. Mm -hmm. Now we'll move on to the scheduled appointment. Feel free to come to the mic. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, members of the board and advisory. I uh, appreciate this opportunity to have this meeting as we do prior to every town meeting. Um, and uh, for those who are watching at home, just to explain, uh, I always say this prior to every meeting um, because I think it's important for people to know that the purpose of this kind of pre-meeting is not to come up with a preordained conclusion on every article. It's just to set up a process so that we're all clear on who's going to make the motions and what the recommendations are by the Board of Selectmen and Advisory Committee um, so that we're all clear we know where each of where we're all coming from, and so that we kind of have a process to come to a conclusion that everybody can understand. But as I always say, it's up to the town meeting to decide each and every article and whether they want to amend the articles or not. It's not up to the board of selectmen, it's not up to the advisory, it's up to the town meeting. So um, I think these have been very productive so that we're all, we all understand where we're coming from and that we kind of establish a process so that we're not kind of wallowing around and waiting for. Some, someone to produce a piece of paper in the meeting. Um, the meeting is next Tuesday at 7 o'clock at the high school. We start at 7. We've been doing that for the last couple of years. Uh, we have probably about 20-something items of business when we include the CPC articles. Um, these, I say this again before every, at every one of these meetings, but these meetings are really important. We can't accept the tax rate. We can't balance the budget. We can't pay over bills that are due. We can't hire. We can't 
uh, do a number of things unless these we can accomplish the business at the meeting, and that can't be done unless we get a quorum. So I ask people to get there as early as they can. Sometimes it takes a while to get checked in, so we can start as close to seven as possible, and we can get out before the playoff game. Somebody's got the talk's right. playing early tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, it's early? Yeah, well, um, anyway, we'll get you out at, at a half piece of time. So, um, as we always do, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to go through each article and just uh, make sure that we all understand where we're coming from. And, um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them, and I may have a few myself. Uh, the first article is, the first two actually seem fairly routine. Um, article one is the transfer from surplus revenue to uh, reduce the tax rate. Article 2 is uh, a similar um, article, and I'm assuming everybody's in agreement with the figures that are in the law and the ones we're going to use and the body is looking at them. One's actually to fund the... Is this the snow and ice? No, this is snow and ice. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so advisory will be both those. And I should also say, for the folks listening and watching, that articles, hard copies are available at Town Hall, and all of the articles have been posted online for the last couple of weeks, so you can see them there. Uh, article 3 is to uh, <coughs> supplement the solid waste budget. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, and the figure of, uh, I'm sorry, 1920. Increases by two hundred thousand. Oh, we're increasing yeah. it by two hundred thousand, right? Everybody's in agreement. Yes. Um, article four is a long list of purchases, and some require borrowing, as I understand. Yes. Obviously, um, some do not. Um, is everybody in agreement as to what's going forward? Uh, we we have not taken uh, an action on it yet. So my only concern from a procedural standpoint, if there's an item that's on the warrant that the advisory committee is not in favor of, uh, I'm guessing that the board would still like to move it. Correct. Well, right now their recommendation is the town meeting floor. Okay. Well, okay. I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's right. I didn't see that. The select ones get his recommendation. Okay. So I guess. So some or all of this may not go forward. So, several of these may not actually go forward. There may be some. So we'll make that clear. I just want people to see the warrant on that. They think we're going to buy it. And then we'll have separate motions for that. What was it required for? Uh, article 5 is. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's the one I actually got a question about. I'm not quite sure exactly what that article does. It looks like a 13, but... We have favorable left. Okay, and can you just explain it in these terms? Basically, it's allowing, it's changing how our bonds are is to create a water department stabilization fund. Um, I'm assuming everybody will pay for that. And the advisory committee will, will move that, and that requires two-thirds. Okay. Article 7 is to transfer funds to supplement several benefit funds. Looks to be routine. We have pay for that. Advisory committee is going to move that one. Article 8 is the same to supplement certain line items, wage and salary. Yeah, I'm not real sure. I know that uh, both. This is this transfer. Okay. 
This is transferring money from various departments. Um, and I know that advisory is in favor of it. Um, I, I think I may, may speak to this. Um, if advisory is going to make the motion, and then we'll let the town meeting. I haven't decided whether or not I'm, I'm in favor of this yet. I'm thinking about doing it in the spring, but um, we'll see. Well, we can we can make the motion on the table. Well, that thing. Yeah. To so simplify, if if, so if it's everyone's in agreement not to go forward with this, I just assume take make have the motion to take no action, and yeah. then we uh, if, we'll, we'll discuss this uh, prior to the meeting, and we'll. We would we could have to uh, as long as we got it uh, the night of town meeting we go with that Article nine is to convey some parcels of land. Um, this is school one? No, that's the next one. Uh, this is tax. This goes, yeah, this goes to the select one. Yeah, assuming this is not covered. Uh, article 10 is to convey um, parcels to the Conservation Commission for conservation and tax preparation. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. Advisory will need that one. Article 11 is submitted by the DPW. Um, Bring the thousand supplement for pavement management plan. Both advisory and selectmen are recommending to take no action on the article. I'm assuming the DPW wants to move forward with it. Well, they're not the ones that brought this forward. It's the town administrator. I mean, the DPW director. Oh, okay. Thank you for that distinction. Do we know have they taken a position on it, or uh, maybe they might show up? But I don't know. But right and now, and we would I recommend take no action. I had this discussion with someone earlier. The move to take no action, really, I, it's, it's acceptable. Anyone can make it. It's allowable. But I prefer to use it when everybody's in agreement that we take no action. If someone feels that we should take some action on a particular article, then they should move the article. We can debate it. And if it fails, it fails. And if it passes, it passes. Um, so I, I'd just be curious whether someone wants to move forward in this, as of now, I guess the motion to take no action would be appropriate and the folks would yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the board agreed. Okay. Article 12 uh, is to compensate the chief assessor. Um, and I'm assuming everyone's in agreement. The advisor can maybe respond to that article. Yes. Article 13 and 14 have both been submitted by the police chief. One is to fund overtime, and the second is to fund two new positions, which we established at the last meeting. <coughs> so I'm, I'm clear as to the selectman's recommendation, both of these is, is favorable. Has the advisory taken a position? We have not taken a position. So Well, actually, the are <coughs> so. So the selectmen are going to move 13 or 14? Well, I was going to ask the chief to. Oh, sure. It doesn't matter to me as long as we have someone to be honest. I think the Board of Selectmen should move them. We, we voted favorable action, so we should stand behind that. I agree. And, the, and the, the chief can explain the particulars to the public. Okay, that's fine. Um, obviously, we don't ignore advisory page recommendation, <laughs> but um, I just, I, I was like, the opponents to take the, make the motion. Article 15 is to add to the community center, what's the position, maintenance? 
uh, an additional sum of money that's been submitted by the Recreation Commission. Both advisory and selectmen have voted to, to take no action on it. And do we know if the Recreation Commission wants to go ahead with this? Well, if they do, then obviously we'll be <coughs> Uh, and the next articles, um, A through H, and Article 16, are all community preservation fund expenditures. Uh, Article A is for guardrail at the Herring Run. Anyone please? Normally, the chair of the CPA. Yeah, we'll do it. yeah I'll have uh, yeah. Lisa Collins, the chair now. Yeah, so I'll ask yes, her. There's a number of them we haven't voted on yet. We don't need them for tonight. Okay. Um, so Article A, everyone seems to be in agreement. Um, Article B, uh, $10,000 um, to exfoliate poison ivy from the stonewall in front of the Friends Meeting House. And I do understand there's some difference of opinion on that. And his advisory taken that. We have not voted on that yet. Again, we're meeting with uh, the CPA. I don't know whether that will be one everyone will agree to withdraw or some party may wish to go forward, but we'll figure that out between now and yes. meeting. Recommendation C is to appropriate 12000 again, this is all CPC money, uh, for ADA compliance at the town landing. Advisory is still We have not voted on that. Okay, all right, so I'm going to have to uh, endorse that one. Article T is for $10,000, or D is for $10,000 for the Cobb Library. Three months. Be to be in favor of that. Recommendation E is twenty-five thousand in open space space for conservation restriction at one ninety Barker Street. And you're still we have not voted okay, that. So I support that. That's property across from the Herring right? Correct. And article uh, recommendation F is for seventy five hundred dollars for the Pembroke Historical Society's building ceiling. Everyone to be we are of that. Recommendation G, 20,000, an archaeological survey of 369 Washington Street. Um, has the board selected a recommendation on that yet? You said tell me the board. Yes, have yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is the decision. Tell me the board. That's what we made. Okay. And advisory. We have not voted. Uh, and that's the property that we purchased at the corner, right? 69. Corner 14 to 53. Article H is $20,000 uh, for the GAR Hall. For select, uh, select is recommended favorable action. It's still under advisement by advisory. Okay, so those are the CPC articles. Article 17 is the article that would create a ban on the use of single-use plastic bags. It's a petition article. Uh, selectmen are recommending favorable action and advisory meeting with the representative. Okay, all right. And I've already talked with the petitioner, Stephanie Hagen, and she's ready to move the article. Which is probably will be moved as printed in the warrant and it's in appendix A. As part of the warrant, um, 18 is a petition article to request our representative sponsor a home rule petition to give relief to four retired employees. And Steve, this is you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was a guy for top one. Yeah, so, um, so I'm going to allow you to make it um, the motion. Um, I'm assuming you need to speak to yourself. Advisors recommend a favorable and selectmen have yes, no recommendation. Right. Town meeting floor. Okay. So, uh, Steve, could you explain that? I just. Okay, okay. okay. all right. Article 19 is. To, oh, this is the school one, too. Yeah. Is this the one that we gave property to the school 100 years ago and now getting it back? Okay, we're not going to build a school well for 53. So this transfers it from the school department back to the town, the board of selectmen? Correct. Okay. 
looking at that requires a two-thirds of the votes in favor of it. And, that, and that's the last time of business. I will just put a plug in for advisory. Um, I, I want to thank them. I will at town meeting for their hard work. Um, I think they're down three members. Yes. Uh, well, Matt Newman, newest member. And so I'll just, while well, we have an audience, here, put a plug in. Um, there are those who might be interested. I think it's very important. To, I think it is a very important committee. I got my teeth in advisory back in the 80s. And they are looking for some good, able bodied people. Um, not much of a compensation, but to be satisfaction of learning how to have done that work. So anybody who's interested, in us. One thing I always like to say is a lot of people, they, they think that they have to be accountable. Uh, we're looking for people with different things. We want people that, that are not number of people that, that are using the comments. And that's it for me, Mr. Chairman. All right. I again, urge everyone to come early and come early and often. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we still do have four minutes left in this uh, joint meeting. And there's plenty of people in the audience tonight. I was wondering if anybody else had any questions for the Selectmen Advisory Committee. All right, hearing none, we're moving on. Thank you for all for coming in. So next up at 7.30, there's a public hearing on a joint poll hearing with National Grid, Verizon, and this is in regards to 15 Corporate Park. So I know it is still three minutes early, but I figure we'll go ahead and get started now. So is uh, Tim Lyford in the audience? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, Tim Lyford, National Grid Electric, 100 East Ashland uh, Street, Brockton. Uh, so National Grid is petitioning to install one jointly owned pole um, approximately 60 feet <coughs> east of existing pole 6 on Oak Street. Mm -hmm. And this is for new service to 15 corporate park drive. I believe the address. <coughs> so, any, um, any questions you have regarding this installation? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to move to grant approval of National Grid and Verizon on the petition to install toll P61 on Oak Street. Be located approximately 60 feet east of pole P7. The new pole is required to provide service to 15 Corporate Park Drive via P61A, located on private property in accordance with work order and plan 2581351. This this is the uh, new Brigham and Women's building that's there. Um, that unfortunately, I wasn't the engineer on the project. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Okay. Second, I believe. All right. Got a motion and a second, but before we take a vote, since this is a public hearing, I want to give the audience a chance to ask questions. If there are any. Hearing and seeing none, I will go ahead and take a vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um. So we do have a scheduled appointment at 7.45 for Mark Soter. And if uh, Mark is in the audience, we can go ahead and take you early if you want. Thank you for coming in. Thank you.
the uh, procedure that we'd like to uh, share with you and, and uh, get you to the understanding that you are the appointees of whoever uh, does get appointed, and that's your discretion. But uh, again, I think it was stated that uh, you know, it would be preferred that we vet somebody and it would be a best practice. So uh, again, this is the process to do that. So you have a letter in front of you uh, that uh, I'll just read it for the record. Uh, dear sirs, at its meeting on October 1st, 2018, the Pembroke Conservation Commission adopted the following rules regarding its volunteer vacancy. The chairman presents these rules to you for the for you. One, advise me vacancy on the commission for 14 days via the town website homepage and commission's page, relevant social media sites, and in the town hall. Two, require attendance at two commission meetings prior to the submittal of the volunteer application. Three, conduct an interview of each candidate after attending attendance at two meetings and receipt of the volunteer application. And four, commission members deliberate on the merits of each candidate, decide which is our the best fit and forward their recommendations to the Board of Selectmen for appointment. So it's a uh, pretty simple procedure and just as a matter of fact, uh, the last, uh, aside from the last appointee who just got appointed a few weeks ago, in the last four people that got appointed, the, the two people that went through the process of getting vetted and recommended to you uh, have lasted for a year and are still on the commission. The two that were put on that didn't get vetted. One of them made one meeting and resigned, and the other one made one or two meetings and because of you know, other issues in the council meetings for a year. So I think that just proves that it is a, a good practice and a best practice at the moment for questions. Well, um, I, I view the, the four things that you have on here that you want to change, and. Um, some of these here are already in the rules and regulations and the procedures that the Board of Selectmen set up for committees, commissions to be appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So some of these are already here. Um, some of the things that I don't like about it is that um, when you advertise for a new vacancy on a commission for 14 days, that's two weeks that goes by that there's nobody uh, sitting on the board. And if they have to make two meetings, um, which you only meet every twice a month, mm -hmm. so that would mean now you're talking about a month and a half before you get somebody that's going to be sitting on the board. Um, and then when you uh, when you go to uh, require attendance uh, to commission meetings prior, um, that, that's going to sit into the first thing I just talked about, was that that's going to make it up to a month and a half before you put anybody on. Um, the, um, the conduct and interview by each of the candidates uh, after making attendance um, to the meetings and receipt of the volunteer application, I don't know whether you have a right to look at uh, or you're checked out by Corey in order to do the applications, because the way that I read the rules and regulations for the selectmen to make these appointments and to make these interviews um, is done under our authority, under the general laws. It's not under the authority of the conservation to be doing that and having hearings and interviews for people. Um, so I think it would be violating the general laws um, if you did this procedure that you're talking about, number one. Um, and then the commission members deliberate on the merit, merits of each candidate, which we don't know how long are you going to deliberate. Um, how long is this going to take place before you replace somebody? Because like we said at the last meeting, when you look at all the rules and regulations and procedures that we made a booklet of and all the selectmen signed it and they all voted on it, this is what we want all the boards and commissions in the town to do under the direction of the Board of Selectmen. And it's pretty specific, and there's a lot of things that's in that little booklet, if you really read it, that talks about everything that should be done and shouldn't be done. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think a lot of that stuff is being done today. Um, and I know one of them would be is that the chairman of any committee is supposed to report back to the Board of Selectmen when they have a vacancy in that committee 
which which would be uh, three or more meetings missed. And if, if my recollection is correct, there's, there's a member that's currently on there now that has missed all the three meetings. I think that's and, three meetings in a row. And that, uh, yeah. And, and the other thing is, is that not only three in a row, but if you look over a period of a year's time, um, there's a lot of other meetings missed. So the whole purpose to have these boards is to have these boards together and to last together and stay together. Um, but the other thing that you have to consider is that, like the um, uh, gentleman, Mr. Curley, had just said to you just, just previously, we're not looking for anybody to sit on the Conservation Commission that is a, a commissioner or, or um, uh, has some perfect expertise. What we're looking for somebody is that, that will come on and sit on the committee and do something while he's on the committee and be of common sense about what's going on in the town and what's happening. That's why we appoint from different directions and different get uh, diversity of people from uh, all over town. So we have a hard job sometimes getting people to fill boards now. So um, I think if conservation had gone by the rules and regulations and procedures that we set up originally, I don't think we would have had a lot of problems with, with conservation and trying to put people on there. But number one, it's not advertised. It wasn't on the website. Um, all, all of those things that are that are in the directives to you guys, you should be reading and you should be following it because that's why we made them. Um, I mean, I recently uh, called a former selectman that was on that had a lot to do with making that board up. The, the procedures up and to set these procedures forth. So what you're saying is conservation is different than every other board in the town, and that's not true. What all of our procedures are is for all of the boards and commissions in, that's in the town that falls under the direction of the Board of Selectmen and for us to appoint them. So if we see a need to appoint somebody on a board, and we bring them in and talk to them here, and we interview them here, and we like what they say or, or who they are or whatever, we have the right to put them right on. But this here says we're going to wait at least a month and a half or until you get through deliberating. And that's that's not, I think you're going beyond your bounds. I mean, I really appreciate you trying to do something in conservation, but I think you're going the wrong way here. I just think that you should leave pointing position to the Board of Selectmen. That's our job. That's what we do here. Um, and you should advertise and let the Board of Selectmen know when you have an opening. So that's the one thing I get to say. Oh. Should I respond? Sure. Go ahead. So uh, it was on your advice that I'm back here tonight, uh, you had suggested in the last meeting that I come back with proposed changes and if I saw fit. Surprised to hear that you're against it because you did recommend that. I come well, back. I'm not saying that we don't that we're not going to consider it at all altogether. I mean, you can bring anything you want in here and give it to us, and we can set it aside and consider it if we're going to change our rules and regulations. And that's what I meant. Maybe I wasn't clear when I said that. But if you make up new rules and regulations for the appointing of just conservation people. Um, I think, well, I think we're going way beyond the scope. I, I think it's be best I, practice for all, all volunteers, not just conservation. Doesn't. Right. But if you understand that it's difficult to get people on the boards anyway, and when you look at the last appointment, um, I just thought that was a bad show of the way everything was done that night. I, I don't think it should have been done here in the public the way that it was done. It was, it was, there's a lot of people that come in here that I don't personally know myself. But if a fellow selectman makes a motion to appoint him and knows him, then I don't have a problem putting him on the board. If for some reason they don't work out, everybody's schedule changes. Everybody, a lot of times people's jobs change. Um, I mean, there's one guy here that's been here for quite a while, and we took his resignation tonight, uh, you know, as a constable. He's been around and been a constable for a good many years, and all of a sudden, boom, bang, it's, it's see you later. He's off doing something else. 
That's the way it happens in, in the town. Um, I, I can see taking your information, and if the board wants to, I'll be more than glad to sit on the board um, and take a look at the policies and procedures that we drew up for everybody in town and look at them and see if anything really needs to be changed. Um, and we can sit down and go over it, and we can invite you if you want to come and look at them. Um, you know, to make recommendations back to the board on whether we should change anything that's here. But just personally, to me, that there's no consistency to the process where it kind of alternates depending on you know what's going on. So if there are you know hard, hard and fast uh, rules and procedures that involve it, they don't just seem to be monitored or, or you know or gone by because it varies depending on who you know what the commission is making. Uh, Last week, or the last uh, meeting, that somebody sent an email as a recommendation, and we voted to put that person in. You know, nobody ever came in front. You know, I don't think you knew the person, but an email recommendation was sent, and we voted that person in. And I'm not you know, impugning that person. I don't even know that person, but it just seems that there's no rhyme or reason to see how this works. And this is just trying to formalize the process. And again, based on the last time I was here. Uh, stated that uh, you know vetting and best practice you know would certainly mean somebody's us recommending somebody to you and, and again we understand it you vote in who you want to vote in it's not about that it's just about putting somebody forth that we think is a good fit <coughs> excuse me fit and uh, and also understands what the job is because as I had mentioned one person got appointed and went to one meeting and then resigned uh, you know so obviously that person didn't really know what they were getting into and I think they might have been rushed on for whatever reason at the time. I don't want to mention any names, it's not important. Uh, you know, also, you talked about having diversity on the board. And, uh, you know, currently, uh, again, we have, uh, you know, in a, on a small board, we have um, three folks that are on another board. So if somebody, somebody comes in, if, some, if a problem comes up, and that uh, particular group is, uh, you know, comes in front of us, those three people have to accuse themselves from any of the topics that are, that are discussed. So that makes us an even smaller board. So, you know, that we lack diversity right now. And that was one of the reasons, uh, you know, that I was here the last time. So, I, again, I'm back here on your recommendation and, uh, and again, just trying to try to put a little process in place that, that seemed to make sense and it was reasonable. And uh, that was what I, you know, again, took back from the last time I was here. Yeah, Mark, first of all, let me thank you for what you do with the Conservation Commission because I live in a waterfront home and it's one of the nice things about Pembroke is you have the water impact and the river impact and it's um, important to have people to care about it, so I, I thank you for that. But I, I have some philosophical op 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 opposition to this simply because I go back to the example of Lowe's. If we had waited 14 days to make an appointment to fill a vacancy up there, there would be no loss. Uh, it was as close as one vote on a board that would have been sitting with one less member, and we appointed one on a Monday, and I think on Wednesday they took a vote uh, from the Planning Board of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I guess it was ZBA. And, um, you know, to have your hands tied to that degree, I mean, I, I think we're also making much ado about very little because we're not flush with volunteers. Um, we've got enough trouble filling uh, various boards that I don't think it's necessary to put them through, you know, I, as I said to one of the members uh, recently, I said, um, you know, you get recognized, the community gets slapped around a little bit and, you know, get questioned, and um, then you end up on the board anyway. So um, I, I think the system isn't broken, I think it needs to be tweaked, but I, I don't go out for the 14 days because, you know, it, it could be, again, another ZBA case or it could be, you know, a conservation easement or something like that and, um, you know, you, you, your hands are tied and, and I, I don't want to do that. I, I think but, that uh, would be amenable to uh, changing the amount of days if that, if that is more suitable something less than 40. 
Yeah, Mark, I was going to suggest, and I don't know if you guys can agree or not, we would take this, digest it a little bit, come back to you next week as something that's more agreeable to us. Okay. Maybe we could do something like that. I, I that's just I my think, idea. You know, we're open open to uh, your suggestions and changes. And, uh, you know, again, I think just to get, you know, something, something uh, you know, noted as a process would be a step forward for everybody. Well, uh, Bill did, did mention the, the process and policies that we have in place <clears throat> for all boards of commissions and... Sabrina, is that online on the website? Uh, Lou developed it a couple of years ago. Right, right. So, so, so we do have a policy in place. Uh, feel free to look it up on online. Uh, but one of the yeah. So it's right. So, so there's a there's a, a policy in place that the selectmen have for the procedures. And there's also a handbook for all the volunteers on how to con how to conduct themselves and, and be a, a good volunteer for the town. Uh, so, we, so we do have written policies in place. But as as Arthur uh, spoke to, uh, those policies uh, aren't adhered to in a in a hard and fast black and white way. Um, two recent appointments, I think that uh, I, I can recall, the Recreation Commission and the Council on Aging, uh, where a vol volunteers, a couple of group people, volunteers on those, uh, on those boards had a friend come in, sit at the meeting, they enjoyed it, and they said, geez, I'd like to volunteer. There, there's a, an open seat, and we've been begging for people to fill those seats. So that's where you get the email recommendation and a, a quick response by the Board of Selectmen. There's no need to wait 14 days if, if we have someone that's fits in, has com camaraderie with the board, and is capable of the position, there's no sense in waiting. So therefore, the hard and fast rules are not required in that case. But we do have written policies, um, but we need the human element also. So that's why we're here, and a computer doesn't just generate these volunteers, these, these recommendations. Um, so what you've recommended is uh, it's it's a it's a good uh, rule of thumb policy, but we can't can't hold fast to it in in every case. But I understand the concept of uh, of, of having rules and, and a procedure to follow uh, that's consistent. That way, no one's left out, especially if this if we have several volunteers for for one board. Uh, so I appreciate the effort. I think we, the board should should take this information and review it along with what we already have in place. And if we need to uh, amend uh, the policies that we have in place now, we can. Uh, but again, those policies are, are made to be uh, bent when, the case when a certain case arises. But I appreciate your effort, and, and I understand uh, why, why you've uh, taken the effort. And I, don't, and I don't, like I said, I don't have a problem. I definitely would sit on any subcommittee or whatever that wants to relook at those policy procedures, they're only three years old. So, I mean, if they were, you know, uh, just done three years ago. So, uh, it's uh, kind of a new policy and procedure, and there's probably a lot of people that don't even know what they are and, and, and recognize them. So, um, and everybody is supposed to follow that, but who's the cop that's going to monitor it that you know, that's going to look at every single commission and committee and see what's going on and let you find out something isn't going very well or something isn't happening well, and then you start looking into it. And then you find out that, geez, they, they're violating our policies and procedures, and they shouldn't be doing that. So uh, one of the things that I definitely would like to go back and change is that rule about missing three meetings because somebody could do that all year long to say, well, I think I'll miss three. No, I'll only do two this month, and then I'll skip, and then I'll go to one meeting, and then I can do another couple and take them off. And you've got a guy that's doing that right now, and that's not right. And that person should resign. But needless to say, that's not coming up tonight for consideration, but the thing is that, like I said, I, I would definitely sit and take a look and see what we need to change. And the people that do volunteer, it's a lot different from a paid position. So if you're coming 
if you are coming on the board, you know, looking to get on <coughs> for a forty thousand or sixty thousand dollar job a year, and you're going to go through a whole set of even stricter ones. And I don't know how many interviews that I've done with with that doing, going through looking at people. One time we went through what forty something applicants for a position took the top position out of everything. Everybody was really happy about the whole thing. Called the person up and said, you got the job? And they said, no, I don't want it. I just got hired somewhere else. <laughs> what are you kidding me? So you got to go through the whole process all over again. And it's, I mean, that's, that just happens. I think the biggest thing and the concern is that, that whoever is coming on a board or a commission or whatever, somebody needs to know them that that they're a good person, they're good at heart, and they want to do the right thing for the town. That's what it's all about, is doing the right thing for the town. Not doing the right thing for any particular part. It's doing doing the right thing for everybody in town. And I, I just think that's important. Yeah. But also, to, to Mark's standpoint, is let this independent board make a recommendation. That's honestly the bottom line. That's what I'm getting from that. That's all it is. Not basically, you know, 14 days, you know, I'm a little weary about that only because of, is it finite that you only meet we two meet times every, a month? Yeah, every other week. Well, sometimes we, we meet every week if there's an agenda that's uh, Okay, so that can be changed anyway. Yeah. But yeah, from, from what I've seen getting from this anyway, it's just basically to make sure that they're independent of us unless like one of us is jumping on the commission something to recommend to us to vote that they like this person to be on the board I understand that you sit there and go, we're begging for people on these boards and commissions, and I get it. But by saying that, personally, it's a cop-out. You know, people want to be on these boards and commissions. I know other people have talked to me throughout the town, want to be actually active in these boards and commissions. But to say, because we're begging for people, that's just, you know, it's, that's, I can't, that's just a moment. To no end. So that's, for the bottom line, it pretty much means that they want, as a independent board to recommend to us because we are the appointing authority. And if, and I, if I'm wrong, Mark, no, that's correct. And, and, you know, last time we had it, we actually had a really qualified civil engineer that was an applicant that we never even got to, uh, you know, met because, uh, you know, because of the way that happened. So, you know, to me, that, was a, that would have been a great uh, addition to the board. And, uh, you know, we really never even got to go through that process with the well, And that would have, you know, again, added another element to the board that we didn't have. And, uh, if they're really interested in it, they don't have to be on the Conservation Commission in order to attend meetings and find out what's going on and find out whether that's something that they really want to do. And it would be a lot easier for you and your board or your commission to allow these people to come in and sit in on meetings. It's a public meeting. Anybody can go over there. There's nothing to say that that engineer can't come to meetings or start to come to some meetings. And he's already fulfilled part of the process that we that we originally made up. And if all of a sudden the, uh, an you know an applicant resigns or whatever, and, and uh, he wants to put his application in, or he may put an application in now. And if you have him on the list, then you could call him and call him back in and say, "This guy's already made three meetings or four meetings. This other person resigned, and we'd like to put him on. And we're going to take your recommendations. Ninety-nine out of one hundred will probably take it." You know, so it doesn't mean that they have to get appointed before they can go to a meeting and do any of the stuff that they've done. No, that's so that's not part of this. Yeah. yeah. So they can come, and if they're interested, we'd love to have them. So we do need good people. So. Yeah, that's a point because even a just because you don't have a vote at that time until the seat opens up, you can participate in the meetings and actually be an influence in the meeting, especially an engineer who who has uh, business acumen that's related to what you folks do. Uh, if, if they're interested in the process and they want, want, want to help, they can listen in to the meetings and, and contribute and have a dialogue with the board. And uh, some people on the board might be strong in one aspect of conservation and weak in another, and, and they could take that recommendation and then help them make a decision. And sooner or later, a seat will open up. They always do. Yes. Sure, go ahead. Um, in 
because Ed's office does all of this. It, it yep. interacts with the chairman, with the applicants, tries to figure out how to help best recruit, get I recruitment ideas. You have several boards that have had vacancies for years, and it is very difficult to recruit and get people to serve up. And the historic district, finally, after a year of recruitment, found a qualified candidate, and that was the letter of interest and email that they appointed on at the last meeting. Um, but going down to other towns, because I go to their open houses, and find out what tricks are they using, how are they recruiting, what are they doing differently than Pembroke is doing. And there are towns, to Mr. Soder's point, that there are specific boards with a lot of interest. Conservation's generated a lot of interest, whereas Commission on Disabilities hasn't. And they desperately need members. And advisory needs members. But to Mr. Soder's point and the board's point, some of these other towns have waiting lists. When a qualified candidate comes in, they're put top of the list for the next appointment. <coughs> it's not a bad idea if you actually can get a lot of people to come in and generate interest on something as important as conservation to consider that kind of a, an opportunity. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no problem. The, the other thing that, you know, I don't know how legal it is, and maybe Ed could advise us on this, is that, you know, maybe there's alternate numbers. Um, maybe the board should uh, consider making alternate numbers on uh, conservation so that when somebody does drop out, you've already got somebody there that's qualified to take the person's seat. And if they're an alternate member, they can vote if that person, if one or two people don't show up to vote, you're not going to have a problem with the board. So, you know, I would have no idea that that would be within our purview or not to establish alternate member status for people like that. I don't know I have no idea. I don't know, I'm just bringing it up that it, maybe, there's, maybe there's room to look at that. Maybe we should look at that and say maybe that could be one of our answers back to you. If you appoint a couple of alternate members, those people would already be on the board and uh, they'd be available when there is an opening. And well, I think the alternate number is a great idea. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that. If you want to put an alternate number. And that would give you plenty of time to look at them and yeah. judge them or whatever. I, I, I just don't know if it's a legal question there under the authority to... Well, you would, the Board of Selectmen would. Yeah, yeah, that, I don't know if that's a bylaw change or, or what... what no, no, I, I think Ed would need to check with that council to make sure yeah. that... Yeah, we'll check with them, let you know. If that's a that. possibility, then maybe they could come in as an alternate yeah. number. Yeah, even if it's not the title alternate, I, I, I think the opportunity to come in and uh, as a member of the public you, you can influence the meeting. Uh, you can influence the board and, and be part of the discussion. Uh, look at look at the plans. You may not have a vote that day, but again, you'll you'll gain knowledge of the board, how it works, uh, some camaraderie with the board members, and then when a seat opens up, you'll know whether you want to make that commitment or not. Um, even being an alternate can be a commitment that some people might shy away from. Uh, some people just want, might want to dip their toe into the water and see without having an official commitment. Uh, so well, we've, we've had alternates in the fisheries for the last uh, six years. And it's worked out really well because when somebody drops out on the fisheries, then the alternate moves right up into the other spot. Uh, well, that was my other thought. Is, uh, you know, does that give them some kind of a blanket status that when the next position opens up, the first alternate goes in? And, you know, I, I, I think it opens up a, a lot of questions, but they, they're probably, you know, good to think about it. I just don't know the answers to them. Uh, because I think it, there's questions behind the, the thought, for sure. Well, that's certainly something we'll take a look into, and Ned, Sabrina, take a look at that with the, along with town council, and we'll consider it as well. So I think um, we'll consider your proposal here as well, but we thank you for coming in. Thanks. Mark. And I would also like to say to Mark and the Conservation Commission, they did a great job with this header. It's green. It's a good piece of paper here. It's not regular paper. It really is a nice piece of paper. Uh, next up, we're moving on to the board action items. First of which is a vote to accept the resignation from Sandra Damon, Registrar. Move to accept with regret. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Uh, any opposed? Mm -hmm. None. We accept that resignation with regret. Yes. Sure, go ahead. 
Uh, please come to the microphone. John, I received a uh, letter, and it's actually listing it as Center Street, which I own property on. I also own a budding property to F15 Oak Street, I think. They asked me to show up for Center Street as an abutter, but in all actuality, it was 15 Oak Street. <laughs> Sabrina, would you uh, be able to take a look into that? Yeah, except that I would receive a notice for 43-1 Center Street, which I'm also on Center Street. And the actual picture, we thought it was Corbett Park. Okay. So it is Corbett Park. Well, actually, the property in full. So. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.